It's not fat you're afraid of losing, it's the fear of losing muscle that kills your fasting plans. Sounds shocking? But it's true. How many times have you made it 12 hours without food, only to hear that voice in your head whisper? Careful, your muscles are melting, so you open the fridge. Again, at the gym, online, everywhere people chant the same myth. If you don't eat every three hours, your muscles will vanish. Really? Does it make sense that the human body built to survive famine, war, and winters would self-destruct just because you skipped breakfast? Let me ask you this. If fasting destroyed muscle so quickly, how did our ancestors survive thousands of years of food scarcity? Why do MMA fighters, monks, and even diabetic patients use fasting to preserve muscle and boost health? Think of your body like a smart hybrid car. When it runs out of glucose, it doesn't burn the engine, it switches to fat. But you've been lied to by clueless trainers, supplement ads, and a system designed to keep you constantly eating, buying, and worrying. This isn't just a personal issue, it's a system-wide problem. And this video? It will rip through the myths with real science, no fluff, no fear-mongering. You'll learn exactly when fasting causes muscle loss and how to avoid it while unlocking all the powerful benefits of fasting. If you've ever been scared into thinking your gains will disappear without a protein bar every three hours, watch this video till the end. Because it just might change how you see your body. Forever. And if you love truth bombs backed by real science, hit subscribe. This channel is where myths go to die and knowledge comes back to life. Your first day of fasting might feel suspiciously normal. You're not ravenously hungry or collapsing from weakness. But don't let the silence fool you inside your body. An emergency meeting is underway. Every system is quietly reorganizing its energy strategy like it's dealing with an internal recession. But instead of laying off workers, your body starts optimizing survival mode. First, it burns through the leftover glucose from your last meal, the biological equivalent of using the cash in your wallet before dipping into your savings. But that only lasts for about 12 to 24 hours. Then, your liver steps in like the Federal Reserve, releasing glycogen-stored carbs to stabilize your blood sugar. Without this move, you'd be dizzy, cranky, and blaming your life choices. Now, here's where things get exciting. Alongside fuel management, your body kicks out a cocktail of hormones, adrenaline, and growth hormone. You might think they're only for escaping danger or hitting puberty, but nope. During fasting, these two hormones protect your muscle like elite bodyguards. Adrenaline boosts alertness and fat breakdown, while growth hormone guards your muscle mass from being burned for fuel. It sounds like a secret military operation, right? That's because it is nature's version. During early fasting, your body refuses to touch your muscle. It knows muscle means power, the ability to move, hunt, survive. So instead of eating itself, your body takes the smarter route. Burn fat. Fat is the energy stash your body normally ignores when food is abundant. But now, it's up for grabs. At this stage, you're still in the safe zone. Maybe your mind feels a bit foggy, your stomach a bit grumbly. But you're far from survival mode. This is just the warm-up. The real biological magic? It begins after the 24-hour mark. And trust me, it gets wild from here. Welcome to the magical zone of fasting, where your body doesn't just cope, it transforms. After 24 hours without food, your system makes a game-changing decision. It switches from burning sugar to burning fat. This is the moment of metabolic switching your internal energy source officially changes lanes. Think of it like going from fast food to clean home-cooked meals. It's not just about where the energy comes from, but how clean and sustainable it is. Glucose gives you fast energy, but it crashes hard. Fat, on the other hand, is slow, steady, and surprise bonus, it produces ketones. Once fat burning kicks in, your liver starts converting fatty acids into ketone bodies, a cleaner, more efficient fuel for your brain and muscles. If glucose is a smoky campfire, ketones are propane, strong, clean, and long-lasting. That's why many people report mental clarity and even a euphoric calm during this stage. Worried about muscle loss? Not yet. 
between 24 and 36 hours, your body is still in full muscle protection mode. Growth hormone spikes, shielding your lean mass, while your system happily burns through fat stores. Fat becomes the sacrificial fuel, while muscle is treated like national treasure. This is the sweet spot of fasting. Fat is burning, the mind is sharp, energy is stable, and your muscles are safe. It's not suffering, it's an elegant biological upgrade. If you play your cards right, your body is doing more than surviving, it's evolving. But hold on, this is just the bridge. If you keep going, you'll cross into deep autophagy and cellular renewal. If you stop here, you've still harvested major benefits. Either way, what you do next defines whether this is a tune-up or a full transformation. Somewhere between day two and three of fasting, a subtle yet powerful shift begins inside your body, not with fireworks, but with quiet precision. This is autophagy, nature's internal cleanup crew. And no, it's not zombie-style cannibalism. It's a highly intelligent, biological decision to recycle the broken, the weak, and the outdated. Imagine yourself as the strict housekeeper of a dusty old mansion. Autophagy is your invisible team, meticulously sweeping up misfolded proteins, worn-out mitochondria, and even potentially cancerous cells. But nothing goes to waste, everything broken becomes fuel. Your body transforms cellular junk into new, clean energy. Most importantly, your muscles remain untouched. This system is strategic. It doesn't destroy what matters, it protects it. Instead, it targets the liabilities, dysfunctional enzymes, corrupted proteins, inefficient cellular machinery. Biologically, it's a year-end detox, but on a microscopic, life-extending scale. At its peak, autophagy reduces inflammation, boosts antioxidant levels, and even clears harmful debris from your brain. That mental clarity people talk about during fasts? That's your brain running cleaner and sharper than it has in years. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's research shows links between poor autophagy and neural decay, so when you fast, you're not just burning fat, you're fighting future disease. Autophagy isn't destruction. It's redesign. And it's quite possibly the most brilliant healing system evolution has ever gifted us. Let's bust the biggest myth right now. Fasting doesn't make your muscles melt overnight. Your body isn't dumb enough to tear down the house just because the fridge is empty for a day or two. For the first 7 to 10 days of fasting, as long as you're staying hydrated and getting your electrolytes, your muscle is remarkably protected. Why? Because your body has backup plans. First, it uses glycogen. When glycogen runs low, fat burning kicks in. Your liver starts producing ketones clean, efficient energy that fuels both brain and muscles without touching your lean mass. Meanwhile, growth hormone levels rise not to make you taller, but to preserve muscle and stimulate fat loss. This is your body behaving like a smart CEO cutting fat, not talent. So when does muscle finally get involved? Only when fat stores become dangerously low, typically after 10-12 days. At that point, the body starts breaking down muscle protein to make glucose, primarily for red blood cells and other tissues that can't use ketones. Even then, your body doesn't go straight for the biceps. It starts with less essential proteins, enzymes, damaged cells, before sacrificing precious muscle fibers. So no, fasting doesn't destroy your body. Misinformation does. Most people think fasting means lying still like a drained phone. But here's the twist to keep muscle. You have to use muscle. That's right, light walking, body weight workouts, gentle resistance training. These simple movements send a clear message to your body. Hey, we're still using this muscle. Don't break it down. It's called use-dependent survival logic. The body keeps what's in use. It discards what's idle. Now, when you break your fast, don't just eat anything. Go for a leucine-rich meal that's the amino acid powerhouse found in eggs, fish, soybeans, lentils. Leucine is the biochemical switch that triggers muscle protein synthesis, the rebuilding of muscle tissue. And here's a relief, even during multiple days of fasting, your body doesn't immediately tap into your biceps for fuel. Like a mechanic fixing a car, it will recycle the spare parts, 
broken pipes, and faulty wires long before touching the engine. In other words, if you move wisely, refuel smartly, and stay alert, you won't just preserve muscle, you'll make it more insulin-sensitive and easier to grow post-fast. The real question isn't, should you fast? It's, can you work with your biology instead of against it? Picture your body as a hybrid car. It can run on gas, sugar, electricity, fat, and even has a built-in auto repair mode, autophagy. But for all systems to run smoothly, you need to know when to accelerate and when to pause. That's why scientists call the 1-6 to 72-hour range the golden zone of fasting, where biological benefits peak without pushing the body into survival stress. At the 16-hour mark, insulin has dropped enough to shift the body into fat-burning mode. If you practice this daily, like in the 16 to 8 method, you'll notice more stable blood sugar, better focus, and easier weight control. Between 24 and 36 hours, your metabolism takes a deeper turn known as metabolic switching. Here, the liver produces ketones, a clean, steady fuel for your brain and muscles. It's also the stage where autophagy kicks into high gear, cleaning out damaged cells, broken mitochondria, and promoting regeneration. What's fascinating is that during this zone, your body still protects muscle mass intelligently. Thanks to growth hormone and ketones, muscle breakdown is minimal. In fact, your muscles become more insulin sensitive, ready to grow stronger post fast. But beyond 72 hours, the game changes. Fat stores begin to shrink, cortisol rises, and the body may start breaking down muscle for glucose, especially if you're dehydrated, low on electrolytes, or overly fatigued. In short, too short, and autophagy hasn't started too long, and you risk muscle loss and stress overload. It's like boiling water you need 100 degrees Celsius to cook, but let it boil too long and it evaporates, burning the pot. Fasting, too, requires precision, not punishment. So, how long is best? That depends on you. Beginners thrive on 16-20 hours, day. Intermediates reset with 24, 36 hours, week. Advanced fasters, healthy and experienced, can benefit from the full 72-hour renewal window. You don't need 7-10 days of misery to find success. Science says, right time plus right strategy plus right body equals real results. So if you want to fast without losing muscle or energy, remember the golden rule. Fast smart, not extreme. Fasting is an art, but when you cross the line, that art turns into a warning. Around day 10 to 14 of prolonged fasting, something unwanted begins to unfold. Cortisol, the stress hormone spikes. This is no longer the elegant biological rhythm of healing. It's your body sounding the alarm. As cortisol rises, regeneration takes a back seat. The body switches into full-blown survival mode. And what happens next? Muscle, which your body fiercely protected early on, now becomes the backup fuel. Autophagy once praised as your inner cleanup crew, starts to fade. Your system simply doesn't have the reserves to repair and survive at the same time. The result? Fatigue, dizziness, mental fog, and muscle weakness. This is no longer intentional fasting. It's biological desperation. And don't let random influencers trick you. Some brag about 20-day or 30-day fasts like it's a spiritual badge of honor. But science is clear. Going beyond 14 days, especially with low body fat, requires medical supervision. You're not just low on energy, you're playing hormone roulette with your body. Smart fasting is a formula of knowledge plus discipline plus listening. It's not a physical challenge or a public show of willpower. You have nothing to prove, especially when the price is long-term health. Respect your biology, and you respect yourself. Sometimes, the greatest victory is knowing when to stop. Remember this. Fasting is not a contest of endurance. It's not about who can starve the longest. It's about who understands their body best, who knows when to fast, and when to feed. Fasting isn't punishment, it's an opportunity. A biological reset button for a system overloaded with sugar, stress, and processed snacks. 
In 2016, Yoshinori Osumi won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his discovery of autophagy, the process by which your body eats its damaged parts to renew itself. This isn't pseudoscience, it's peer-reviewed, Nobel-level biology. Then came Dr. Jason Fung, who brought fasting from theory into practical healing. He doesn't teach starvation, he teaches people how to listen to their bodies and use fasting as a tool, not a punishment. You don't need to be a monk or a warrior to benefit. Sometimes, a simple 16-hour fast, done right, can activate a cascade of deep cellular repair. And, the most important part? Eating is part of the healing, too. Knowing when to stop, when to nourish, that's the pinnacle of body wisdom. Fasting is not a battle. It's a conversation with yourself. Done right, it doesn't weaken you. It makes you sharper, cleaner, stronger. The real magic isn't in the number of hours, it's in the awareness behind your choices. Science can show the way, but intuition, education, and self-respect are your true compass. It's not about how long you can fast, it's about how smart you fast. Fasting isn't self-punishment, it's the art of balance, of burning the old and building the new. In the silence of your stomach, your cells are having the loudest conversation, rebuilding, cleaning, regenerating, a body that can trigger autophagy, protect muscle, boost growth hormone, and burn fat instead of burning out. That's not a diet. That's an advanced biological strategy, sculpted by millions of years of evolution. And today, you don't have to run across deserts to unlock it, you just need to pause eating at the right time and fuel right when it's time. So, if you're wondering, will I lose muscle? Will I feel weak? The answer is, no. Not if you understand your body. Fasting doesn't make you fragile. It makes you sharper, clearer, and more in control than any trendy diet or miracle supplement ever could. Don't fast out of fear. Fast because you understand. And if you're ready to step into this ancient yet powerful rhythm, drop a comment, share your experience, and don't forget to subscribe. Because your body doesn't need to shrink, it's ready to rise stronger than ever.